I'm in the Sangyong Muso XLV Ultimate this week, and this ute has been facelifted to include better premium features, design aspects, and better ride comfort. How does it compare against its rivals, the GWM Ute Cannon and the LDV T60? Stay watching to find out. The facelift sees the Muso gain a mid-spec variant, bringing up the lineup to a total of three grades. Our test vehicle here is the flagship Ultimate, which is priced from $45,000 drive away, making it one of the most affordable 4x4 dual cap utes on the market. However, our test vehicle does have a few option packs and accessories, which does boost the overall price. The ultimate grade gets heated and ventilated front seats, a heated steering wheel, as well as upgraded technology like the new 12.3 inch touchscreen multimedia screen, which is up from the previous eight inch system. There's also a new 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster, which is also up from the previous 10 and a quarter inch system. Our test vehicle has been fitted with the luxury pack for an extra $3,000. That adds dual zone air conditioning, leather upholstery, electric front seats, a sunroof, as well as heated rear outboard seats. It's also fitted with an XLV pack for an extra $1,500. Now that adds 300 millimeters to the tray length as well as 20 newton meters of extra torque. But we're not done. With the red metallic paintwork and the optioned extras like the tow bar, tonneau cover, rubber mat set and the electronic brake controller, this test vehicle actually slides in to just under $54,000. Not bad considering the market, but not as jaw dropping as what the initial price might suggest. However, I do feel like a lot of those items are more needs rather than wants, especially the extra torque and that tow bar if you're going to make use of the three and a half ton brake towing capacity. The full specs are in my detailed written review at carsguide.com.au if you do need more info. Design is always subjective. This is big and looks like a four x four dual cab ute to me. I do like some of the cool new design features like the HID headlights and the vertical LED fog lights. The finish isn't the best I've seen with wide spaces between the door jams and a weird painted like foam joinery that's in the tailgate that's already showing quite a lot of wear and tear for a brand new workhorse. Little things like this could make it seem quite worn very quickly. The bonnet is huge, but a little bit odd looking because of how low slung the horizontal grille is. But again, you might love it. Let us know in the comments. It's obvious that the facelift focus has been on the interior and it's here that the design really works for me because it feels like a premium cabin with the leather upholstery, black headliner and sunroof. The dashboard has been redesigned and now it features the updated tech, large integrated air vents, as well as a digital climate control panel. The interior on a whole just makes us feel like it's more expensive than what it actually is. The room up front is downright roomy. I have so much space and I like too that even when there's a passenger beside me, I don't feel like I'm on top of them. The electric upgraded seats are a must have. They're so comfortable and I love that it has lumbar support too. Individual storage is average for this size ute. I like that the charging options have been upgraded from the previous USB-A ports to two USB-C ports. You also get two 12 volt ports, but one of them is an old school cigarette lighter. The sunroof has a manual sun blind, which just reminds you that this is in fact a workhorse. Other little elements are the big gear shifter and the manual handbrake, but these are all things that I actually really like. The touchscreen multimedia system is responsive, but is limited to just the radio and a small settings menu. Think of it more like a mirroring screen for things like your wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto but it is very easy to connect to the CarPlay, which was great, and the graphics are super clear and colorful. The instrument cluster is semi-customizable, but it's in here that you can actually access a lot of the safety features to customize them, which is great. The back seat is as comfortable as the front, and I have a good amount of leg room for my 168 centimeter height, but the headroom is even better because of the clever lifting of the roof here. What I like about it too is that the width of the seat and the flat floor means that you could probably get three adults pretty comfortable back here. The amenities are okay for a ute of this class. You get directional air vents, reading lights, map pockets, but you do miss out on any sort of charging options in this row. 
I always like the practical things like the hardened kick plates and a fold down armrest with two cup holders. The ground clearance of this ute is a smidge lower than some of the other utes that I've sampled. So despite not having any side steps, I didn't actually find this to be hard to get in and out of. This back row has no split, so it actually folds down in one piece, which does mean that when you're fitting a child seat, if you have to fit more than one, it's going to be a little bit of a struggle. For me, this is going to be a set and forget scenario. With that extra pack, the length of the tray is increased by 300 millimeters, which boosts the overall capacity by 251 liters. The max payload for this is 880 kilos, which is fine for your odd adventure pursuits on the weekend. With our optioned soft tonneau accessory, it means that your gear stays dry, which is great, and you get a full-size spare wheel in this, which is always good. I like that the tailgate is nice and wide and also quite light to open with the assisted tailgate function. However, this doesn't have any side steps to speak of, which means that if you're a bit short like me, it can be a bit of a comedy to get into the back to get things. The facelift doesn't see any changes to the Muso's powertrain, with it still having a 2.2 litre four cylinder turbo diesel engine, with a max power output of 133 kilowatts and 420 newton metres of torque with that XLV pack fitted. Despite only having a six speed auto transmission, the gear changes are pretty smooth and this has got a really good sense of power. Adventure enthusiasts will also be pretty happy that this is a proper part-time 4x4 with low range and it's easy as pie to switch into it if you need to. While the looks haven't won me over, the driving experience certainly has. This is a very nice ute to drive and doesn't feel ute-like, which is great. I did find that the retuned suspension, which is on the facelifted model, has improved the ride handling as well. The suspension feels really well cushioned, but not spongy, which is always a plus in a big car. This has got a really good sense of power and you feel really at ease when you have to hit the open road or overtake. I actually also found this to handle really well in corners. Despite it being quite a tall car, there's not a lot of roll when you do hit corners. I still wouldn't tackle them at speed, but I had a lot of confidence in what this car was doing on the road. You don't feel any of the weight of this car when it comes to steering. The steering, for me personally, is on the lighter side than I usually like, but that does give it more of a car feel rather than a ute truck feel, which I think a lot of people will actually enjoy. The cabin is wonderfully quiet from wind or road noise, even at high speeds. And that gives it a really good refined sense, which I don't feel you often get in a big ute like this. I really like the higher driving position. I feel like I've got a really good sense of what's happening in the road up front, but the wide windows offer an insane amount of visibility. Seriously, like blind spotting is so good in this because of how wide and big they are. Despite being almost five and a half meters long, this actually isn't that hard to park because it has a really good 360 degree view camera system, as well as front and rear parking sensors. You won't have too much trouble. However, it does fill out a car space. So I would be inclined to check that this will even fit in your garage before you buy. Despite being so big, it's not too bad when it comes to fuel efficiency. The official combined fuel cycle is 9 litres per 100 kilometres. My real world usage came out at 10.2 litres, which was a little bit higher than I expected for a diesel, but still good because I had a good mix of urban and open roading, so I wouldn't expect it to be that much higher in a totally urban setting. Based on the official combined fuel cycle and the large 75 litre fuel tank, you should be able to see a driving range of around 833 k's, which is still pretty good for a ute of this size, but probably not as good as other more efficient utes on the market. This top grade has most of the important safety features that you expect for a new car, but only at this level. The lower grades do miss out on some big ticket items, which is a little bit annoying that you have to pay extra for safety. This has six airbags, which is great for the class, but is unrated with ANCAP, while all of its rivals do sport a five-star rating. 
This has got Isofix child seat mounts on the outboard seats plus three top tethers, but you can't actually fit a child seat in the middle seat because it features only a lap belt. Only having a lap belt and not the sash does actually lower the overall safety aspect for anyone who is sitting in that seat. So I would consider that as an emergency seat for adults only. Check out the full review at carsguide.com.au if you need more safety info. The ongoing costs for this are great with it coming with a seven year unlimited kilometer warranty, which is above average for the class. You can get a seven year or up to 105,000 kilometer servicing program where the services average just $375, which is very competitive. Servicing intervals are good at every 12 months or 15,000 kilometers, whichever occurs first. The Sanyong Muso XLV Ultimate is an affordable workhorse that offers comfort, good features and drives well. Safety is a very high priority for my little family so it does lose points on that front but if you're after the practicality of a ute and on a budget this gives you a lot of bang for your buck so it gets a 7 out of 10 from me. If you're after more details check out my full review at carsguide.com.au and I'll see you next week.